Mohammed, I know a lot of uh, my friends, they are coaches. They have great experience and they have great services, but they want to turn their services and bring it, start to bring like customers. How can they start to monetize and how can they uh, find uh, customers? Yeah. The most important thing for coaches is to um, distinguish m between their coaching certification <laughs> and their coaching business. Because there's your certification is teaching you the skills of coaching, the questions to ask, how to probe, how to uh, listen and so on. But they don't teach you business. In the, for the business side, as a coach, please choose a niche. I know that you have the skills to coach anyone to do anything, <laughs> but uh, choosing your niche, a very specific segment that you are confident uh, of your abilities to help and to help fast and to help in a, a very easy and systematic way is very, very important. Do you know that you can be a reason for changing people's life from this channel? Probably you will ask me how. I will tell you how. My name is Ahmed Khaled and I am the host of this Unleash podcast. We speak mainly around personal development and entrepreneurship. Our mission is unleashing the human greatness to its utmost potential. And this is by interviewing CEOs, entrepreneurs and coaches physically in Dubai to extract their wisdom and change your life. Now, can I ask you to do me two favors? Firstly, can you hit the subscribe button? It helps this channel to grow more than you expect. Secondly, can I ask you also to refer this channel to three of your friends who can benefit from the values of this channel and you will be the reason of changing their life. Now, you can enjoy the episode. How to identify that niche? Go back to your story. Mm. See one of your biggest struggles that you have been through uh, and, you, and you were able to uh, come out as, you know, victorious. You have some philosophy, some lessons, some discoveries around this challenge and you want to act as a guide to others and, and, and help them out. When you share your story, it's the most powerful marketing tool for coaches and experts ever because the customer, when they listen to the story, they see themselves in you. And instant rapport. Yes, I've been struggling the exact same struggle. And since you have uh, overcame uh, that uh, challenge, then I can trust that you can help me also overcome it. Uh, the story is very, very important as a marketing asset. And the second uh, most important thing is to turn your story into a framework. Uh, I always give the example of the seven habits of Stephen Covey. Mm -hmm. um, the brilliance of the seven habits is not the habits. It's the structure of the habits. Uh, because the book didn't share anything new. But he put it in a framework that's, uh, that's amazing. If, if you remember the seven habits, it was like a circle and two uh, triangles. Mm -hmm. uh, the first triangle is the, he called it uh, personal victory. Uh, the first three habits. And the, th the other triangle is the public victory, uh, the other three habits. And the seventh is the circle that encompasses them is the sharp and the saw, taking care of yourself, your energy, and so on. This model, this framework is the uh, reason or the secret behind the empire of the seven habits that's still living till this moment, even after he died for many years back. Uh, the framework was unique. He put the principles of personal development that were scattered and and were sh being shared in a very theoretical, unpractical way in a very, very systematic way. First, you will focus on these three habits in, in this specific order, mm -hmm. being proactive, then do, the, do this and then do this habit. And then you will move on to the other three habits that are related to communication skills, win-win and, and all these uh, uh, brilliant uh, methodologies that he uh, shared in the book. So turn your story into a framework. Uh, think about if, if I got a client now with this specific problem and I'm prom I, I promise him to uh, guide him to this result that he wants to achieve, what are the steps that I would walk him uh, through? Step one, he needs to do this. Step two, he needs to do this. Step three, he needs to do that. So you build the system or the framework that you use to help your clients. This framework will be used in a book, uh -huh. be used in an online course, will be used in a workshop, a retreat, in one-to-one -one coaching sessions, group coaching sessions, will be used to uh, 
guide your content strategy on social media, uh, what topics you should speak about. This is the cornerstone of any coaching business, the framework. Mm -hmm. it, because people won't buy sessions from you. We will, they will not buy your time. They will buy your framework. They will buy the seven habits, not a life coach. Mm -hmm. They will buy the seven habits. They will buy the program that you created, the framework you created. So you can put your prices uh, and you won't, you won't care about all the, it's very common in the market that the one hour of life coaching is like 500 dirhams or five, mm. no, no, I can set prices much higher because I'm selling something unique, a branded, like you mentioned, passion to profit. It's not business coaching. It's passion to profit mm. the award winning program, the, 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 and the reputation and the success stories, because we have a very unique framework and methodology. So sell a framework, sell, sell a brand not uh, an hour of, 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 of coaching. So this is very, very, very important in marketing and positioning yourself as a coach. But in that case, if I build all of these uh, steps in my the back of my mind, now it comes the, the step of generating customers and leads. Yes. What is the, your advice to start with? Yeah, I, uh, I always check with the coach or the expert, let's call an expert, consultant, coach, trainer, whatever. Um, to check his uh, preference or, or based on his uh, strengths. Someone is introvert like me, maybe he doesn't, doesn't prefer to speak, but he's comfortable in one-to-one -one setting. So the most powerful marketing strategy is what, what's called a discovery call or a strategy call. And uh, I will start doing some ads, asking people to spend with me like 15 to 30 minutes to check their problem and give them some tips to, uh, to put them on track. Mm -hmm. And in that call, I build the value. And when they see the value, they will ask about the program. And I will tell them or refer them to the details. And they either um, check it on the website or speak to one of my team or even discuss it further with me on the call. So this, this is for people who prefer one-to-one -one, uh, conversations. Mm -hmm. Other people, they love to speak in front of a group. So I call it uh, one-to-many. So you can do uh, events, uh, seminars, online uh, webinars. And you share your framework, you share your story, mm. and you share your framework, and then you give at the end a call to action for people to sign up for your coaching program or you help them one-to-one -to, -one to go through this, uh, this framework. So either you speak one-to-one -one or one-to-many. The, the most preferred uh, ways for coaches, when you become famous and you, when you become a brand, Content marketing and direct ads on social media will be enough and you won't need that. And, and uh, one more thing, when you write your first book, you won't need to do that at all because the book is the ultimate sales tool. People will get it, will read it, will see the framework, then they will want to uh, work with you. So it's the ultimate sales tool for coaches when you write your first book. But at the very beginning, you will do a lot of discovery calls to understand people or you will do webinars and get Q&As to understand how people think, what uh, what are their pain points and so on. So you fine tune your marketing message uh, as you go uh, through. How many products that you suggest for any coach as a start to start with? They will start with one to one. Mm -hmm. This is the most easiest thing, it's a minimum investment uh, of time and effort uh, and money. But you will, you should build a, 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 a complete, uh, I call it a, an expert ecosystem products that start with the premium one, the one-to-one -one coaching, but it, uh, it moves down into group coaching, into mm -hmm. retreats, into live workshops, into uh, online recorded courses, uh, and uh, a book uh, mm -hmm. that's the, at the bottom of the funnel. So this is the entire ecosystem for experts. <sighs> I know one of the biggest struggles for many entrepreneurs when they start their coaching programs, the pricing. <laughs> when they start, how much shall I position my price yeah. here for that product? Do you have any factors that we can build in back in before? Case studies. Mm. Uh, at the very beginning, you will set the minimum you can accept. I call it the minimum maximum strategy. What is the minimum number of, uh, you know, I'll do like a 30 or uh, 30 minute session or a coaching program like for three months or whatever. What's the minimum minimum price I can accept? Below that range, uh, I won't believe that uh, I will underestimate myself and the value that I'm giving. So this is the minimum. You can start with that, but there is a maximum that you aspire for. 
I wish to get charged that number because I believe in the value that I'm offering and I believe in the uniqueness of my program and my framework. And I deserve to get this, but it's it's hard in the beginning because I don't have and, proof. I don't have case studies. I'm not well known yet. I don't have enough content on social media for people to consume and gain, and gain more trust. I don't have a book and, and, and so on. So uh, anything in between you can start with, you can start at a minimum or minimum plus, and then go up as you build your equity and authority online. Uh, and you get more followers and more case studies and more testimonials, more referrals. And when you get more uh, bookings, when your calendar is full and you have a waiting list, it's a sign to raise your prices and, and uh, charge more. As a demand. The supply and demand, you know. Mm, yeah. Uh, uh, one of the second struggles uh, when we are an entrepreneur, especially at the beginning, is managing our type, <laughs> right? So um, I'd be like, bombarded by cold calls, booking here, my programs, webinar, seminar, just uh, following up your content creation, all of this stuff. Do you have any formula that you used before that we can give it to the entrepreneurs that are listening to us just to manage their time at the beginning? Uh, here comes the, the, the important uh, road of passion. Uh, because at the, at the beginning, it's hard. Um, uh, uh, you may need to do the discovery course by yourself to make sure that your marketing machine is filling your pipeline with quality or qualified uh, clients. Uh, you may need to uh, enhance your webinar the presentation and the pitch at the end until you nail it. And when whenever you give this presentation, people line up to do or to book sessions with you. Uh, it will take time to fine tune it. But once you figure out the, the formula, uh, the marketing formula, you can uh, either automate it, okay. you can do the webinar as recorded, automated uh, okay. funnel, or you can, um, uh, for discovery call, you can hand it over to, a, we can, a sales guy, but he's, I like to call him a specialist or consultant who can help the client uh, on your behalf and check his scenario or situation or problem and uh, start to sell your value to him or her in the call. So either you will hire someone to help you with with uh, the qualification or the qualifying calls, or you automate it online. Uh, and as you, as, as I said, as your brand grows, as, as you become more famous, as you have more proofs under your belt, um, the demand for your time uh, become less and less. Mm -hmm. One of the third struggles that <laughs> you would say also for entrepreneurs, when I have still, I don't have like brand equity at the beginning, uh, spending on ads, right? Just to build an equity and generate leads, take them on funnel. What is the optimal budget that I should have into my ad spend? Just start. You can start with the minimum budget that you can afford and uh, work out your numbers. For, for example, I can only spend like $20 per day, uh, spend $20 per day and see how, what happened, how many people register for the webinar and how much uh, each registration costs, how many people show up on the webinar, how many people convert and sign up for my program. So you, you like, you may spend like $1,000 or something in a campaign and then you see how many leads are generated, how many, uh, how the conversion rate, how many people uh, converted into customers. Uh, how many people booked a call, how many people closed after the call and, and signed up and, and so on. So you will have your numbers that will give you confidence in the next campaign to put more budget. Because if, if it's working, if I get uh, uh, profits from uh, for my spend, then it's an investment. I will put $1,000, I get $3,000 back. I, next time I will put two so that I get six uh, and so on. So, but in the beginning, uh, until you work out your numbers and actual uh, what's what's happening on uh, on the ground not just estimates uh you will have to be conservative until you are confident of your funnel and mm -hmm. the conversion rate and how people uh, react to your call to actions in every stage yeah. uh, one of the challenges that i said at the beginning on facebook ads let's take it as an example when you do a campaign i always look at you know the cost per lead and the clicks all of that every single time <laughs> So, uh, 
And uh, I'm afraid that I'm investing or wasting money on the wrong leads, right? What is your best advice, Justin, if I launch the first campaign on whatever platform that I have, I make sure that I'm investing on the right uh, leads and at the same time also I'm not wasting this uh, money. Uh, you want to you want waste the money because you are learning. Mm -hmm. So you have to wait until the <clears throat> you have to wait until the funnel is is complete. You can judge by the leads only because uh, you, you never know uh, whether these leads are good or not unless they you, you pitch them the offer mm -hmm. or the, you ask them to sign up for your coaching program. Um, because you can judge that, uh, for example, I. The lead cost is fifty uh, fifty dollars per lead. This is too high. Who said maybe they will sign up at the end in the coaching program that costs three thousand dollars? So it makes sense that the lead costs fifty dollars because the, uh, you have a high ticket program. So you you can never be sure unless the funnel is complete is done. You drive at least uh, my the magic number. I always uh, advise people to wait and and then. Uh, evaluate the, the the whole scenario based on is at least from 100 to 500 people who listen to your pitch uh, and your offer and see how many of them converted into paying customers. You Before five, that... 500 who signed, signed in... No, I we the, attended the webinar. Okay. You do uh, like uh, the discovery, same discovery calls with them. They listen, they, they, they knew the offer. Uh -huh. They listen to the coaching program, its details and its pricing. Because if, if if you had this number of people, you will statistically you can be confident of the conversion rate of your funnel. Mm -hmm. uh, you can judge by okay, uh, I had like fifteen people attended the webinar and none of them signed up for my coaching program. This is a very low number to judge mm -hmm. whether this campaign worked or not. Fifteen people is nothing. You have to wait for uh, a statistically relevant number to evaluate the the effectiveness of your campaign. And this number is at least 100 people. And more uh, to, to be more confident uh, uh, about your numbers and estimates and all this stuff is 500 people. And before that, don't, don't judge uh, whether what I'm doing is right or wrong or if I'm moving in the wrong direction, right? Uh, running the right ads or not before that it's it's irrelevant do you have any reference let's say that i if i run the my first campaign mm -hmm. at the beginning how many leads that i should i should generate per day for a specific campaign otherwise i stop it let's say after today's stop it if I, it doesn't generate and i need to uh, uh reframe my ads I mean, yeah, it depends on how many customers mm -hmm. you want to get at the end for example uh we will assume that your conver conversion rate is like two, three percent. So if I want uh, three customers per month at a conversion rate of three percent, then I need to bring in 100 leads in this campaign. So 100 leads, conversion rate three percent. So I three people will buy and turn into customer. This is my goal. So I need to spend as as much as needed or possible to get these 100 qualified leads. Because my assumption is that 3% of them will convert into customers. It can be more mm -hmm. or it can be less. I can't know until I test and see how it works. If my funnel, let's say it's 14 days and I see a lot of leads that they are coming on, shall I wait for 14 days? You have to, yeah. Or shall I or close the valve after <laughs> <laughs> no? one week or you shall have I put? To, you have to wait. You have to, and there are, of course, it's it's very hard to explain this in a podcast. But uh, there are mathematical formulas and equations that gives you an indication whether the cost per lead is um, on the right track or not. Because, uh, for example, let's uh, let's assume that you you want to bring in three customers, and uh, you have a budget of one thousand dollars to spend. And as we said, we need 100 leads to get these three customers. Mm -hmm. So I'm expecting that these $100, I want to bring in 100 leads. So the cost per lead is $10. So if I'm running ads and the ads are bringing in leads for like $100 per lead, mm. so there is something wrong, you know? Yeah. So uh, and there are other formulas that will help you to, uh, we call them uh, key performance indicators to uh, to know precisely uh, if the campaign is on the right track or not. but 
with some common sense, you will be able to figure out if there is a, a disaster in the funnel and in the in the ads, or it's it's okay. It's a matter of patience until you see how it works in the end. Yeah, I will speak also about fears. <laughs> <laughs> I think that we can yeah, speak yeah. about this uh, um, ads for a long time based on yeah. your experience. But yeah. one of the the most fears that uh, I think about it also is what what after getting this the full funnel right let's say 14 days and i spend like one thousand dollars for for the ad i get what i want uh, as uh, leads but at the end of the day no conversion from where can i spot the problem is in my funnel uh if you, if if 100 people or 500 people like we said listen to your pitch and they knew about your offer and no one uh signed up for your program then you need to ask them because there is definitely a problem in the offer. Mm -hmm. There is something that's not clicking with them. So a very short survey that you can send by email. Um, you have been in my list for some time now for 14 days and I've been sharing with you some value and I uh, shared with you the details of this program that I'm, I'm sure it will help you transform your life in this way and achieve the results that you were expect you signed up for. Uh, but uh, surprisingly you didn't sign up yet so i need to know how it can add more value to you so if you can answer these few questions i would be very grateful and listen uh, so maybe people will give you some features that they need you to add maybe they uh, uh, they need uh, another format they don't want coaching they want group coaching or whatever uh, people will surprise you with some uh, very valuable insights uh, on what they exactly want uh, because if, if that um, so many people uh, specifically at least 500 people listen to your offer and no one converted then uh, the offer must be changed in a way or another yeah. unleash is the bridge between my purpose and my mission and my mission is unleashing the human greatness to its utmost potential.